thousand people. We're in 70 countries and we're the world's largest education company. The digital journey for Pearson actually started in, in 2000 where I think we actually got a pretty good preview uh, of, of where the industry was going. Um, our bread and butter has always been textbooks. And obviously when we saw the World Wide Web taking off, there was a huge interest in actually converting this content into a digital media in there. And we've been, I would argue, successful. Um, our challenge though has been we're, we're pretty much a company of acquisition. And so over the last 20 years, we've acquired pockets of technology. Um, some of these uh, more technically astute than others. Um, and, we, and we've had recipes in terms of textbooks and print that have always worked for us. Um, I think the challenge now is is actually going from this, this, this really stable media uh, of books and actually looking at how do you convert not only the content of that book, but to actually make it available in very, very different forms. So instead of just a book, it could be um, content in the classroom, it could be an exercise on, on a mobile phone, um, it could be an adaptive learning that, hey, you don't really understand a particular skill, so Pearson will have an engine that will deliver content that will help with remediation. I think we started with two or three APIs. We're up to about 50. We have 300 plus partners. Uh, 20 applications have been developed. One won a Cody Award in education. And I believe we're running roughly 20 million transactions a day um, through our API management system, AppG Edge. So the first thing, it's, it's, when we got into this business, um, we did not know what we didn't know, right? I mean, we're all back-end technologists. Uh, and, and so there's, there's really, I think, two things that, that Apogee has done for us as a company. Um, first of all, acted as a partner and really helped us understand what this digital journey actually looked like. So Apogee was very good at, at pointing out potential pitfalls or opportunities in which we would never have known about those. Um, the second thing really is analytical insights and, and, and protection. And so what do I mean by the, the latter protection? When we first started our API program, uh, we had a client who was running tests and the number of transactions literally I would say it went up by 100x and it brought down our, protect, our, our production systems. Um, and so one of the things we originally brought Apogee in was for basic for, for uh, policy management or spike arrests um, in this case. I think the second thing is analytics really giving us insight into how our APIs are being used. Um, what are the more popular APIs or the more popular routes? Um, what apps um, do we see actually kind of rising up to that? And then more recently, um, we were, were looking at, at actually extending our external program internally, which sounds really kind of backwards, right? And so if you look at the evolution of APIs, a lot of folks will have APIs inside and they're like, hey, we have some value, we're going to go outside. The challenge with us is because our, our program was customer driven, we really started with an external or a partner audience. Um, now what Apogee is helping us do is, is really understand how do you actually take advantage of you know, the same type of API management you would do for a, a, a public program or a partner program and how do you apply that to, you, to your internal processes. And so I think it's... Um, it's uh, Apogee's micro gateway. And so today, really what we're looking at Apogee for is, is how do we manage our microservices? How do we manage APIs from within the corporate boundaries in addition to what we're already doing in the cloud? So our developer program, um, it, it's interesting in that we originally, we built our own, um, and this is kind of back in the day when we're trying to roll our own API program. And a couple of things stood out. One, uh, we didn't realize the value of documentation. We didn't realize the value of, of actually having support. And so what we found out, probably within six months of our first API program, 
was 60% of, of the development team, our internal development team, was going to support. And so what we did again, reached out to Apogee, kind of partnered in this, and, and they really introduced us to the notion of a developer portal, a developer community, and we were able to, to get that in place literally, with, I would say within three months. Now, since that time, we've grown significantly. And, and one, of, one of the challenges we see today, especially in the world of education, is a lot of our clients are, are instructors or university or department heads. They typically don't have a large IT staff. And so in terms of them being able to take advantage of, of our APIs, typically they can't. They don't have the money to do it. Um, and so with our developer community, what we're really focusing on in 2016 is how do we remove that barrier of you have to be a developer to, to use our APIs. So we're looking heavily into technologies that, that allow anybody to, to, to leverage our APIs in a manner which, which is familiar to them. I think there's um, a couple of things that came out early in ours. Um, first of all, Talk to your end users, right? And so one of the things that we found out, we built um, a suite of APIs and the comments we got back from our end users was, have you ever used those yourself? <laughs> like, no, because um, at th that time, we, it was a bolt on strategy. And they were like, you should. And, and as soon as we did, one of the things we realized was, um, in, in many ways, it was nonsensical. And so what we did is we then went back to our users and say, okay, tell me what you're trying to accomplish. And they'd, they'd literally provide us a vision. We would decompose that vision into APIs, make it generic enough um, so that then other clients could actually use it. So I think first and foremost, if you have users or potential users, engage them in that process. Second, uh, find a partner like Apogee. And the reason I bring this up is you know, we, especially in the API management space, there, there's a lot of software products out there. Everyone seems to be jumping on that bandwagon. I think the thing for us that, that really separated Apogee from, from the rest of the pack was having you guys actually come in and, and explain what it meant to be going uh, digital, uh, what it meant to have APIs. Um, you guys were able, to, were able to speak in a language our executives understand. Um, I remember Apogee coming in and, and talking about KPIs. They weren't talking about Apogee Edge or anything like that. And so I think if you can find a company who has done it, who can introduce you to other companies who maybe not in the same business, but very similar patterns, um, you, can, you can definitely... I don't want to say a shortcut, but, but you can you can lessen that route between hey experimentation and success. <laughs> Why do I love APIs? Um, long story short, I I started my career as a developer, um, and this was you know giving them away my age back in the early '90s. And at that time, um, there was a thing called ActiveX components, which were APIs. And it took my ability as a developer from, from what I would consider very immature to creating world-class products simply because I could leverage an API that, that somebody else had, had kind of cooked for us. Um, I think today what's very, very exciting about APIs is that if we're successful, right, and, and we can take some of the, the development complexities out of it, it allows us as individuals to really define what our our life experience will be, right? And what I mean by that is I now have the ability to connect all of these disparate apps um, in, in ways that are very personal to me and enhance my life.